Do you feel confident watching the news in Portuguese and can at least understand the gist of what is going on? Parabéns! But when a real Portuguese person talks to you, do you freeze and want to go back to the comfort of your mother tongue? I get it. I felt exactly the same way when I was learning Polish years ago. I mean, something as simple as buying pears was a struggle. Today, I will help you get a step closer to understanding how a real Portuguese person speaks. I'm Katarina, a language fanatic, and at the Language on School, I share out-of-the-box tips to help you understand and be understood in European Portuguese stress-free. First, you'll hear some news in what I like to call Cinderella Portuguese, and then you'll hear the exact same piece of information in what I call real Portuguese. Now, if you never heard me talk about these two concepts, think of it this way. So it's nice to be drawn into the Prince Charming kind of story, uh, but real relationships are quite different from that, as I trust you will know by now. Now, finally, we'll look at the differences in terms of vocabulary and, of course, pronunciation. Esta noite, um homem de nome Manuel foi encontrado embriagado nas ruas da Estrela, um dos bairros mais proeminentes de Lisboa. Consta que começou a beber pelas 19 horas e só parou de madrugada. Testemunhas oculares relatam que bebeu mais de uma dúzia de cervejas num primeiro bar na Baixa. Mais tarde, deslocou-se num elétrico sobrelotado de turistas sem data para voltar aos seus países de origem até ao já mencionado bairro da Estrela. Confuso por não ter ouvido absolutamente nada de português, alega-se que assediou uma passageira loira, roubando-lhe a carteira ao sair do elétrico. Ninguém sabe ao certo que importância este evento terá nas nossas vidas, mas consideramos de extrema importância relatar acontecimentos banais para dar oportunidade aos nossos telespectadores estrangeiros de aprender a língua de Camões. Hoje à noite encontrar um gajo chamado Manel, todo bêbado, no meio da estrela, aquele bairro todo chique de Lisboa. Dizem que começou a beber às sete e só parou de madrugada. Ouvi dizer que bebeu umas quantas olas num bar da Baixa. Depois apanhou o elétrico à pinha com turistas que nunca mais se vão embora até à estrela. Ele ficou bem baralhado porque não ouviu patavina de português. Parece que apalpou uma bife e ainda lhe gamou a carteira antes de basar do elétrico. Ninguém faz ideia para que é que estamos a contar isto. Mas não deixa de ser importante falar sobre estas coisas para que os estrangeiros desse lado possam aprender a língua dos tubas, não é? What we're going to do now is first I'll show you the translation and then we'll look at different chunks of the information and compare uh, side by side in terms of vocabulary used and the pronunciation. So last night a man called Manuel was found drunk on the streets of Estrela, one of the fancy neighborhoods of Lisbon. It seems he started drinking at around 7 p.m. and only stopped at dawn. Witnesses reported he was seen, seen drinking some beer at a bar in Baixa. That's downtown. Then he took the tram, packed with tourists who never seemed to leave, all the way to Estrela. He was very confused for not hearing a word of Portuguese and even harassed a blonde passenger. Before leaving the tram, he stole her wallet. No one knows for sure why we're reporting this, but it seems important to talk about daily things so that people on the side, on that side, can learn Portuguese. Esta noite, um homem de nome Manuel foi encontrado embriagado nas ruas da Estrela. Hoje à noite encontraram um gajo chamado Manel, todo bêbado no meio da Estrela. So notice I do not pronounce the U. It's optional. It's just shorter and we do this often in Portuguese. Esta noite and hoje à noite, this I see all the time. My unschoolers do this all the time. It's not incorrect to say o esta noite is just use Portuguese. It's Cinderella Portuguese because when we speak we talk about hoje à noite. Num dos bairros mais proeminentes de Lisboa. Consta que começou a beber pelas 19 horas e só parou de madrugada. Um bairro todo chique de Lisboa. Dizem que começou a beber às 7 e só parou de madrugada. So here the time we have the 24 hours in Portugal, in Portugal, so if it's a formal setting like the news is, you would hear 19 instead of set. Now, preeminent, we have chic. Then, 
listen to this, Beichtotschik, Beichtotschik, because as you may know, the final O's are not really pronounced, are not stressed, so they become more of a U sound and very soft. Beichtot, Beichtot. Testemunhas oculares contam que bebeu mais de uma dúzia de cervejas num primeiro bar na Baixa. Ouvi dizer que bebeu umas quantas jolas num bar da Baixa. Ok, so here we have cervejas is the general word for beer. Jola is uh, one of the many informal words for it. Here's just very long testemunhas oculares contam. Ouvi dizer, I heard it being said. Notice here the S, the different pronunciations it has. So normally at the end of a word, it sounds like a SH, so umash, but it does depend on what comes after. So a Q leaves it as a SH. However, here it's followed by a, a J and an N, a J and a N. So it would be really hard to pronounce it as a SH. So quanta sholish, it's impossible. So we do want to make our lives easier. And this SH becomes a J. The symbol is for a J. Quanta jolish. And the same thing with this one. I stopped there, but I should pronounce the rest so that you can hear it. Quanta jolish num. Quanta jolish num. So, umas quanta jolish num. Hopefully you hear it. Mais tarde, deslocou-se num elétrico sobrelotado de turistas sem data para voltar aos seus países até ao dito bairro da Estrela. Depois apanhou o elétrico à pinha com turistas que nunca mais se vão embora até à estrela. Só so, deslocou-se, it's really formal, apanhar is to catch uh, some means of transportation, sobrelotado, again, formal, à pinha, it's very informal, uh, but not rude or anything, so if you're on a bus and it's packed, you say à pinha. Here, notice how I combine these two sounds, até à estrela, até à estrela. I don't need to take a break, ok? Confuso por não ter ouvido absolutamente nada de português, alega-se que assediou uma passageira loira, roubando-lhe a carteira ao sair do elétrico. Ele ficou bué baralhado porque não ouviu patavina de português e parece que apalpou uma bifa e ainda lhe gamou a carteira antes de bazar do elétrico. Ok, so confuso, confused, but we have bué is informal for very muito, baralhado, um, you would have a card deck, before you play you need to shuffle it, and that's what it means, like shuffled. <laughs> um, here, so loira, beef or beef if it's a woman, it's a very informal way that we use, maybe I shouldn't be saying this publicly, but it's um, how we refer to a tourist, normally it would be British, considering historical, for historical reasons in the Algarve, very white skin that becomes Red as a lobster in the summer. So that's why we... And beef in Portuguese means steak. Okay, So maybe you can hear the reference. And then roubar, the verb to steal. We have gamar, it's informal. Sair, to leave. Bazar, it's informal to leave. And how did I pronounce this? As in, I combined the final E's drop. So uh, as I like to say, they vanish. And then... We're, we're practical people, pragmatic, so we do combine marry the k with the rest because it starts with a vowel. So, k palpo. But if you listen back, I didn't say k palpo. I said kia palpo. So, I remove things and then I put something in again. It's our way of stressing uh, words. Kia palpo. Ninguém sabe ao certo dizer que importância este evento terá nas nossas vidas, mas consideramos de extrema importância relatar acontecimentos banais para dar oportunidade aos nossos telespectadores estrangeiros de aprender a língua de Camões. Ninguém faz ideia para que é que estamos a contar isto, mas não deixa de ser importante falar sobre coisas da vida, para que os estrangeiros desse lado possam aprender a língua dos Tugas, não é? Ok. The most important thing here is really pakek. Pakek. So para is normally shortened to pra or pa. So pakek. This is very informal and a news reporter will never say like that. Um, and then of course, naturally, because I'm from the Lisbon area, I will skip the ES. Uh, because I'm being informal, in a more formal situation, I would pronounce the whole verb estar. But I said temos. 
and then acontecimentos banais, coisas da vida, you know, more informal. And here, just to, to let you know that formally, um, Portuguese is known as língua de Camões. If you don't know who Camões is, uh, look it up. And then I say it informally, língua dos Tugas. Tugas is an informal way of addressing the Portuguese, like the British are the Brits. If you're still confused about which words we connect, when, why, and all that, you can check this video where I explain everything about it. If you can already sort of understand what's going on when you watch the news in Portuguese and you want to up-level your Portuguese, your listening comprehension a bit, then have a look at my free mini tuga below, where I have six resources of native content that you can expose yourself to, to start training your ears and your listening comprehension to as real Portuguese as it can be. I have a very special video with a very special guest next week. Até lá!